to my second part of my Sage Barista Express review. For this video, I am just going to be going through how I make a good cup of coffee. Now, flavour and coffee is obviously very, very subjective, but this is just what I found that I've done over the past year of using this machine to get a really good cup of coffee. First of all, there's two things that you kind of need to have if you're going to make good coffee. First is obviously you have to have really good coffee. Now, over the weeks, obviously when you're using coffee every day, it can get very expensive to get um, batch roasted, um, fresh coffee delivered to your doorstep. Um, so Good Life Coffee are the ones that I tend to use uh, for when I'm going for small batch roasted coffee that's delivered to your doorstep every couple of weeks, um, and I use that. But that does get quite expensive. So what I have found with this particular machine is that I've been using this brand, which I found off Amazon. Uh, it's a company called uh, Number 17. Um, this is a kind of grade three strength. Um, it actually is, has a very, very strong flavour to it. So the profile is actually perfect for me. Uh, but it isn't kind of batch roasted. Obviously, this is a 500 gram ba uh, bag. This lasts me for a couple of weeks. But I f find that this is a really good coffee. A few things to note. Whenever you are using um, coffee for this particular machine, I found that coffee that is slightly drier in texture works better with this grinder. And I've pulled better shots. Uh, when I originally got this machine and I first bought it, I bought some fresh coffee from a local roastery um, here in Nottingham and um, it was very, very oily, the coffee. And you'll see when you look at the beans, you'll see some dry beans and you see some oily beans, got a texture to them. This grinder doesn't particularly like oily beans. I found that when it ground, ground the bean itself and I tried to get a decent shot from it, I really struggled and the shot was quite bitter. So then after lots of trial and error, um, I then found different coffee companies and I started using, like I said, um, Good Life Coffee, and their, their roastery seems to be like very dry bean, um, and this particular brand as well, this number 17, I found works really well with this machine, and you get really good shots. So that's something to keep in mind if you're struggling to get a good shot in the first place. Um, second thing, obviously, is good water. So you need to have decent water to put in this, this machine for two reasons, really. One, it affects the flavour profile of your coffee, but two, you want to prolong the life of the machine. So taking standard tap water and putting it into the in, into, straight into the tank, yes, it does have a filter, but it's not going to filter out all the particulates that you might get in, in some of the water. So I found that I've been using a water distiller to distill my water first before I actually pour it into this machine. So I actually distill my water, I add some minerals back into the water, so the water's rich in minerals, and then I add that back to the machine. So I've done a review on that uh, device I've got, the distiller, in the past, so I'll put a link to that below so if, you, if you're interested in that. But um, I recommend good water, good coffee, and then you should be good to go. A few things that we kind of need to bear in mind when we're obviously setting the machine up. First is the grind setting, so making sure that you've got the right grind setting for the coffee. Now that changes on every type of coffee that you use, so you need to fiddle about with the grind settings. So in regards to things that I've found very, very useful in helping with this process, one is you need a scale. So I've got a scale here. This isn't my best one. I had another one, but unfortunately it broke. But um, I'll put a link to the one that I normally use, but this is my backup at the moment. So you need a scale in order to measure out your dosage of, of, of raw beans that you're going to use. Um, uh, the second thing that you need to use, um, I found extremely helpful, is a knock box. If you don't have something to put your coffee beans into, and I use this to tampon as well, um, it's such a useful thing, and for the price, it's about 11 quid. Um, they're, they're really, really cheap, and this one matches the machine quite nicely. It goes well with the stainless steel finish. Um, you need those couple of things, and I found that not having those in the beginning uh, made life a lot, a lot harder. So when you've kind of got your grinds, you're gonna have to keep walking back and forth to the bin, and you can drop coffee on the floor, and it just gets very, very messy. So the other thing that I got was some kind of nice. Um, cups or glasses to put your kind of good shots in. I found using standard big cups um, fine, but it's nice to have these kind of insulated mugs to keep your espresso nice and warm. So I get, again, I got these off Amazon, so I'll put links to all these below, um, but these are made by Bodium and they're really, really nice um, and they can just go well with the machine and they fit nicely on top as well and they look good. So um, it's always those kind of three things are kind of essential really in terms of getting a nice cup of coffee and kind of making the process look good. I think when you spend a lot of money on this machine, you want to make sure that you're kind of getting the best out of it as well. So that's kind of it in terms of other additional things that we're going to use. I'm now going to get into making a cup of coffee. So I'm going to, going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 18 grams of coffee. I found 18 grams to be a really good um, optimal size for the porter filter that's used on this particular machine. So um, what I do, I use a, a standard little glass and the reason I use something small is because we're going to grind the amount of coffee that we require rather than having the kind of coffee grinder full of coffee beans so it keeps your coffee nice and fresh and it also means that it's easier to dose out when you're requiring a specific amount of coffee um, and using a glass like this means that you don't have to move your machine back from the wall you can simply lift up the um, coffee uh, grinder lid and pour them in um, so it makes it nice and convenient so I recommend you doing something like that so I just put my cup on there get the weighing scale to zero out and then I get my coffee beans so there you go spot on 18 grams so from here I'm now gonna um, switch the machine on okay I'd probably dose my coffee whilst I was letting this warm up so while this lights flashing it's obviously getting the, um, the machine up to temperature now lots of people say that you first have to leave this switched on for kind of 20 minutes before you use it and I don't think that's true at all not unless you need your glasses to be nice and hot from the top of the machine and um, all I do is I run some water through it by using a single shot for the first time so when you use a single shot it's going to warm up the porter filter it's going to warm up your your glass that you're dispensing into a mug um, and everything's going to be warm so you don't need to worry about doing that so so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the lid off the grinder I'm going to pour those 18 grams straight into there so now I've got exactly the amount of coffee that I need I'm not going to waste any so what I like to do now is now I've got my beans in the machine um, I'm going to get my cup that I'm going to use for this particular shot I'm going to put it underneath and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pump through a single shot so that's this button here I'm going to press that button and all that's going to do is going to water, uh, sorry, heat up the water filter and it's going to heat up the glass with some nice hot water and it's also going to clear through anything that may have been left from, from previous uh, shots that we've made I'll just leave that sat there for a second and then I'm just going to get my water filter out and I'm just going to pour that water back into the gasket so now this is in a position where it's nice and hot and it's ready to be used uh, to get my coffee in the grinder. Now what I do is when I place my porter filter onto the grinder, um, I leave the filter size, even though this is a double basket, I leave it as single and I leave the grinder mat halfway through because what I want to do is grind some coffee um, I don't want it to spill and overflow um, by grinding too much coffee that it can't cope with, but then I like to pat it down and add some more coffee to that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it once. <laughs> And when it stops, I'm going to take it out, give it a couple of pats. So you just see I'm patting it here just to get the coffee level. And when it's nice and level, it means it's not going to overflow anymore. So I can put some more coffee in. And again, I'm going to extract it now until all the coffee is ground. And you'll hear the motor kind of get slightly higher when it's finished grinding all the coffee. <laughs> And there you go, coffee's all grind now. Give it a couple of taps, level it out with my finger so that it's nice and level. Okay, just clear the sides. There's nothing on the sides that's gonna stop the ports filter from going in securely. And then what I'll do is I'll get the tamper from the machine. And this is where the knock box also comes in quite handy, is that you can kind of lean the um, port filter on the side of the knock box and then apply your kind of pressure to tamper itself. Now applying the pressure is one of those things where you want to make sure as much as you can, now obviously I'm doing this on camera so it's a little bit difficult at the moment, but you want to try and get this as level as possible. Mine's slightly wonky because I've been doing it without actually paying too much attention, but I'll just uh, try and level that out again. There we go, so you can see that it's nice and level, okay, and there's no kind of coffee grinds around the side of it. So that's going to easily go back into my porter filter, put that in place, so it's all ready to go. Now with my glass is nice and hot now, so I'm just going to pour away the rest of the water. 
glass, glass is really, really nice and warm. And this is an insulated glass, so it keeps the temperature nice and high as well. And I'm gonna place that under, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the double shot button. Now, what I'm ideally looking for is using the gauge, is that they kind of say that as long as it's kind of at 12 o'clock, you're pulling a good shot. I like to go slightly higher than that, as I find that the extraction is a little bit too quick if it's at 12 o'clock, and for me, and for this particular coffee, I like to extract it for a little bit longer, so I need that kind of higher pressure. So when you've got the higher pressures, obviously you've got to be careful because too much extraction, um, it's gonna um, be a weak coffee. If there's too little extraction, um, or so it's too high extraction, in other words, the pressure's really, really high, and you start choking the machine, you can end up something really, really bitter into, into your cup. So ideally, you're looking for around about sort of that 30 second mark, um, but again, it's all down to the bean that you're using and, and how you kind of prepare your coffee and how you prefer the, your flavor profile. So I'm just gonna press my double bot button now. And in the meantime, I'm just going to fill up the um, jug with some milk. And you can see I'm getting the range I'm after, it's dripping through. Okay, it's not coming in through too quickly. So getting a really good extraction there, it's a really good time as well. And there you go, so that's a, a really nice pull. Um, wasn't too fast, um, it wasn't too slow, and for me that's, that's just right. So if I show you that once it's finished dripping, getting all that good stuff. And uh, as that's going on, what I'll do now is I just move the um, wand down and actually switch the, to the steaming mode. Uh, and you can see this will start flashing now, hot water steam is gonna come out. And there you go. It's got a really nice crema on there as well. Okay. So you can see now how quickly this takes to, to kind of get to temperature. This is the reason why on my first review I said there's no need for a double boiler. It's so quick. And there you go, I've already got steam coming out of it. So. Now, I haven't got loads of milk in here because I don't like my coffee particularly really, really milky. But what I do is I tend to put the, uh, the, the pitcher in at an angle and that starts the milk spinning. Okay, so it's hard to, it's gonna be hard for you to see this on, obviously on camera, but um, the actual milk is now spinning kind of uh, clockwise. Um, and using my fingers at the bottom of the pitcher, I can actually feel the temperature of the milk. So when it gets to a point where my fingers are, can no longer kind of hold on to it, I know that's kind of got to temperature. So, um, and also this picture and the one included on the, on the machine also has a temperature gauge on the side, so you can see that temperature. And that's getting to a point where it's getting really hot, really hot now, and actually um, the temperature's coming up. So let's leave that for a few seconds longer. And again, this is all down to practice, guys. So you just have to play around with it so you get something that works for you. I'm not amazing with milk. Um, but I just know what tastes okay for me. So I normally have straight black espresso. And then I'm gonna start taking that off, put it away and switching the steam on off. Now when I finish with the steam, after I finish with it, it cools down, I'll actually clean it off. But what I like to do is the machine itself obviously purges a lot of water at this point. And then I just run a little bit of steam just for a second, again, just to push out any milk that may be stuck. Right there. Hopefully you can see that, looks pretty good. Okay, uh, and that is how I make a coffee, guys. Tastes really good. Um, for me, that's kind of a perfect profile. It's not really, it's not bitter, um, it's got a strong enough flavor and with the milk, obviously it's got a nice creamy texture to it as well. So yeah, that's exactly how I make coffee every morning. You can see it doesn't take very long at all. These little contraptions like having an up box, having your weighing scale, 
knowing the right amount of coffee to use on this particular machine makes a lot of difference to how good your coffee is you're going to get. But like I said, for every type of coffee you use, you're going to have to dial in um, your your um, coffee to get the right type of flavour profile that's good for you. Um, and it takes a little while, but as I said, once you've got it down and you kind of follow those instructions, you know, if it's too low, you know, it's going to be a weaker coffee. If it's too high, it's taking forever to come through. You're going to get drops coming through. You've probably got it, got it too fine to grind. But play around with it and hopefully you should get a good shot. If you've got any questions on anything I've been through, um, please let me know in the comments. Um, check out the links I've got for the coffee um, and for even for the other coffee as well. Um, they're really, really good coffees. I found work well with this machine. Um, and get yourself a weighing scale and an op box and um, you'll find it makes your whole life a lot easier when making coffee with this machine. Catch you soon in the next video, guys.